Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So a bunch of you guys reach out to me having watched my past data science SQL interview question walkthroughs asking me where I found my questions and also uh, you know, how I came about getting that dummy data that I used to test out my solution. So honestly, the way I did it was I just went on glass doors and found the questions and just did it manually. And in terms of the dummy data, I just made it up, um, thought about the different edge cases and put it onto DB SQL to check. This was also the way that I was doing it when I was preparing for my own FANG data science interview. And honestly, it actually did take a really long time. Um, and it's kind of like, I don't want to say it's like completely wasted, but it's just like not very productive because you're spending your time not practicing the question, but trying to find the question and also making sure that your answers are correct. So that is why I'm super excited to tell you guys I partnered up with a platform called Stratascratch. Nathan from Stratascratch basically reached out to me saying like, hey, I have a platform where I curate real data science SQL interview questions. And then um, he puts in all the dummy data so that you don't have to do it yourself. And then he also posts a solution, which he either does himself um, or and slash or it's crowdsourced from other users that use his platform. Um, and he himself is also a data scientist. So, you know, his solutions are very credible there. When he reached out to me, I was really excited because what he described, you know, perfectly addressed those pain points of finding the questions yourself and also creating dummy data to test out your solutions. So I was like super excited and I checked out his platform. And I have to say that I think it's a really, really awesome tool. So long story short, I agreed to be an affiliate for his platform. Um, and by the way, I actually spent a significant amount of time vetting the platform out. I went through like a lot of the questions and did them myself and just checked out the solutions as well to see if they're actually correct or not. And, you know, because I feel really responsible for what I promote and I'm pretty picky about it in general, I want to only promote stuff that I really see as both really, really helpful for you guys and is cost effective. So full transparency, I do receive a commission if you use the link that I'll be linking in the descriptions below. Okay, so instead of me talking about it, I'm gonna show you guys what it actually looks like and how it works. And for myself, um, as I'm gonna be doing more of these weekly SQL interview question walkthroughs, I'll be using Stratascratch, except for the times when I'll be using my whiteboard. By the way, you should definitely stay until the very end of this video if you want my honest opinion about the platform, its pros and cons, and who I think would benefit the most from using it. So without further ado, let's tackle the question. All right, so this is Scratch Scratch, the platform. Um, and our question today is a medium question from Facebook and it's called number of conversation by each user. And the question is find out the number of conversations send were received by each user by date. Okay. And the table we have here is called FB messages and it's ID, date, user one, user two and message count. So ID is, I believe, the message ID. The date here is going to be the date in which it was um, sent. And then user one and user two, user one is sending it to user two, I believe. And for message count is the number of messages that are being sent. OK, uh, let's also look at the expected output. So this is what it's supposed to look like. So we have three columns here. You have the date, you have user one. OK, so that's going to be the user and you have message count. Okay, so because we're finding out the number of conversations sent or received by each user by date. Okay, so I do have an assumption I'm gonna be making here. Um, it's basically the fact that because you're doing send and receive, that means that there will be duplicate rows in the sense that you, know, you can have your date, for example, here and your user one is Jerome 75 and your message count is three. So Jerome is sending something to someone else and they sent three messages. But because we're also doing received, which means you have, might have another row um, when Jerome responds, when it's, sorry, the person who Jerome sent it to responds to him. So, you know, that person sends it to Jerome. So you would have Jerome again in terms of received and then your message count here. So there, I'm assuming that um, it's okay to have this kind of duplication because they say they want the number of conversations both send or receive by each user. Okay, so those are my assumptions and let's tackle the question. All right, so first part, I will, I want the ones that are sent first. So get message count for sent 
And then we want to get message count for receive. Um, and then we want to union these together. So adding them together. And that should give us this table. OK, cool. Let's do the actual query. So from FB messages, select, so we want the date, user one, and message count. OK. And then we want to get the message count for received. So from FB messages, select date, user one, oops, user two in this case, and message count. Okay. And then we want to union these together. We want to actually use union all over here and not union because union would actually remove these duplicates. Um, and as I was saying from my assumptions before, we actually want these duplicates over here um, because we want users that were both sending it and receiving it. This looks correct to me and let's check it out. Oh man, failure. Okay. Um, Okay, solution is for a solution to be accepted. Your output should match the expected solution values. Okay. What is not matching here? Huh. You know what? I really think that this is correct. Um, okay, so find out the number of conversations by send or receive by each user by date. Okay. Okay. You know what? I feel like it might be because you want it to be ordered by date. That's the only thing I can think of um, that can potentially be different. Okay. Whatever. Let's just try ordering by date. All right. Why is it not working? Okay. Okay. Order by a date. Okay, now it worked. <laughs> okay, so that does look the same over here. I guess like it wasn't actually, well, it, it actually wasn't ordered by date because unless you explicitly state it, you don't have a guarantee that's ordered by date. So now that we know that, let's check the solution, which they have here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do, 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 date, user two, message count. Okay, yeah, they do order by date as well. Okay, that looks, that looks correct. Um, I actually have the same solution as this one. So yay, good job, everyone. Okay, so we got the right solution, but we're not quite there yet. Remember when I was talking about my framework for how to approach each question and finish it? And if you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out. I will link it above where I go over my framework for approaching each question. So um, after you do a question, you also want to think about potential ways in which you can optimize the solution and also um, business use cases in which maybe there's some things that you can do um, and that you can amend so that it's, it's more useful for a business use case. So in this case, remember those duplications I was talking about in terms of the assumption? The question itself wanted these duplicates, but if you think about it, when you have duplications, um, it, it just kind of, you know, you just have like another row there and it's not super interesting unless you're interested in exactly how many messages each person sends to the other person, how many that messages that person received as well. So if you're actually looking at a conversation, you might be more interested in the entire length of that conversation, how many messages were sent in total. So I'm actually gonna leave that to you guys. Think about how to do that and actually comment below um, in terms of how you would amend this query to uh, be able to address that situation. So just to make sure you know, I'm, I'm more clear on this, for example, when you have U Crawford 4 and U Crawford 1, here, so we actually want one row for this instead, and then it should say, 
83-2020, you know, 0, 0, 0, um, and then you crawl forward, and then here it's 1 and 4, so we want that to be 5. So yeah, leave a comment below and write that query how you would be able to do this. And we're done! See how we don't actually have to go and create dummy data by ourselves, think about edge cases, and then put that onto DB SQL to check our work. It's all done already. You know, the data says here, dummy data is here, you can test it out immediately. So that is really, really useful and saves us a lot of time. Also comment down below how you guys solve this question. I'm super interested in seeing your solutions and with any SQL question, there's so many different ways of approaching that question. And I'm really interested to see how you did it. All right, so now that you guys had a chance to see the platform and see me work through a question using that platform, as promised, I'll now talk a little bit more about the pros and cons. So the pros. The questions are real SQL interview questions, and that is amazing because you don't have to go out on Glassdoor and try to curate that yourself. It's already done for you. And a second really, really big pro is that you don't have to go and create dummy data for yourself and check out your solution and see if it's correct or not. Also a huge time saver. Third is that there are solutions and then you can use that to verify your solution. I think that's really helpful if you're just starting out and you might actually not know how to approach a question. And four, there's actually Python solutions as well. So I didn't demo this um, in this video because of the SQL data science interview walkthrough, but it does have Python solutions as well. And that's super helpful if you're also going to be practicing Python for your interviews. Okay, so now the cons. I vetted this product pretty thoroughly and went through quite a lot of different questions. And I noticed that there is some disparity between questions um, in terms of their quality. So some questions are really, really great and other ones, you know, not, not as good. Um, so it's, this is like a con that you should be conscious of in the fact that not every single question posted is going to be a really high quality question. Although they do have a really large bank of questions. Another thing is that the questions can sometimes be a little bit confusing. For example, the columns might not have descriptions and you wouldn't know how to actually approach that question. Or like even in this case, right? Like I had to kind of like think about what could possibly fix my query and it was because I didn't write order by date. And that's something that wasn't explicitly listed for the question. So in an actual interview, they will probably actually tell you that they wanted to be ordered by date. But in this case, you kind of have to figure it out or like, you know, look at the solutions. And third, there are some minor bugs that I noticed. For example, sometimes if you write your query and it's actually not correct, it would tell you that it's correct. So it's really important um, to actually verify your solution with the official solution and also see if your query, what comes out of it, actually matches the output table. Overall, I think this is a really excellent product if you're someone that's really serious about preparing for data science SQL interviews. Um, or Python, they also have Python. And it's a really, really big time saver in terms of the fact that you don't have to go and create your own questions or make up your own dummy data. So yeah, that saves you a huge amount of time. Another thing is I'm actually pretty surprised by how reasonably priced it is. So let's see here, it's $25 a month or $6.25 a month for a year's access or $159 for a lifetime. Actually, I was pretty surprised by how affordable it is. And it says here that they also have a seven day refund policy. So yeah, there you go. You can try it out at no risk. It's not perfect and you do need to be mindful of some of the points that I listed out earlier. With that being said though, I have chatted to Nathan quite a bit as I was going through this product and betting it out and he's really responsive to feedback and really wants to improve the platform. I truly do see this platform improving a lot in the future as he adds more content and just curates it more. All right, I hope you guys really enjoyed today's data science SQL interview question and answer walkthrough and intro to Stratascratch. If you're interested in Stratascratch, please do check it out in the descriptions below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.